Okay, our next guest is uh, going to be John Jacob Schmidt. Now, uh, John Jacob Schmidt is a combat veteran from the Army. Uh, how many of you know about the the uh, military rivalry that goes on? Right. How many how many Marines do I have over here? I've got a few. Okay. You guys know what Army stands for, right? Ain't ready for Marines yet. He's probably going to kick me when he comes on the stage. Uh, John Jacob Schmidt is the uh, host of Radio Free Readout, a good friend of mine, uh, been involved heavily in the Liberty State Movement, and he is probably uh, the second most talked about person from The Guardian magazine. <laughs> John Jacob, go ahead and join us on stage. Thank you, brother. You guys doing okay? Oh, yeah. This is supreme training weather. Oh. Come on. Come on. If it ain't raining, it ain't training. That's right. So we got some God-fearing, li liberty-loving patriots out here. And this is awesome because this separates the real patriots from the sunshine patriots. Oh. All right. So I need you guys' help to raise this roof. So I want to start off with something for our law enforcement across the country, for the FBI, for our National Guard troops, and that is, get off your knees! Yeah. You took an oath. You took an oath. You need to remember that oath and not kneel in submission to communism. Because that's exactly what this is. So, six weeks ago, this event, had 15 minutes. I'm just going to get warmed up in 15 minutes. <laughs> six weeks ago, this event started to get planned so that we could come together as in a, 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 a joint appeal to our governors to say, give us back our constitutional freedoms before we have to take them back. It was an appeal for this fake COVID stuff that did not turn out to be the pandemic they said it was going to be. Fair enough. We played along. We did safe distancing. We did everything because we listened to the professionals who know they're the virologists. We're not. And it didn't turn out. And they still want to keep us locked down. So we planned this rally, right? Now, the last two and a half weeks, our country has just exploded. So we stay on task. And now, I guess, yesterday in the Coeur d'Alene Pravda, they run an article where the Democrats are all bent out of shape because we're doing this rally while the rest of the country's trying to grieve, and we're stealing the limelight. <laughs> to heck with them. They've done everything they can to stop this rally. Somebody sent me, I guess the communist heads are spinning like a top. Somebody sent me a screenshot of some Facebook or something. So I was like, these guys have to be stopped. This is dangerous. This is John Jacob Smith's going to be speaking. And this guy's, this guy's dangerous. And he's, he's disturbing. And I'm like, oh, this is a... All right, kids, look. Can I get some respect? You know, they just roll their eyes. <laughs> no, they're good kids. But they really spun out over the fact of God-fearing, liberty-minded patriots gathering in unity, and they don't want the unity. But Psalm 133, 1 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell in unity. And we've seen unity here in the heart of the American Redoubt in the last couple of weeks, have we not? That was a beautiful thing to be a part of. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But we are definitely in a fight. The fight is on. Like Sam Culper from Forward Observer says, we are in the advanced stages of low intensity conflict. That means we are uh, not in a peaceful state, but we are not in a full war at this time, at this point. But things, the, the adversaries are escalating to that point. The Antifa and some of these other these uh, communist groups. And so we, you know, I'll tell you what, the slump Trump, I know the Trump slump, everybody enjoyed that. It was just like, ah, oh, breath of fresh air. And everybody kind of took their foot off the gas. And I was like, no, we're on borrowed time. This thing that's coming is still coming. We need to be doubling down and preparing for this. 
There's four sure ways to lose a fight. First of all, not realizing you're in one. Secondly, not knowing your enemy. You have to understand your enemy. Three, not taking your adversary at his word. When a guy who has a history of saying, I'm going to punch you in the face, and then walks up and punches somebody in the face, now standing across the street from you saying, I'm coming across the street and I'm going to punch you in the face. And he starts walking across the street and he makes a fist. And you're stunned when he punches you in the face. These people are doing exactly what they say. They're projecting what they're going to do. They're telling us what they're going to do. And they're doing it. <laughs> and the fourth way to be sure to lose a fight is to not fight back. Apathy. Now, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. These are real patriots. Like I said, this is not the sunshine patriot group. But all of those ways you can lose a fight. And we're... we're really losing at this point, patriots. They are highly organized, they're well funded, and we're sitting back watching. Now right now, we should be watching and observing, and we should be using discernment. We should be discerning the, the times that we're in, discerning the enemy that we're up against, and taking them seriously. Jesus was even telling these guys in Luke, you guys, you guys can uh, you can tell what the weather's going to be, you can tell when it's going to rain, but you can't discern the times you're living in. Well, we need to use time, we need to be able to discern the time that we're in. I want to quote somebody who was able to discern the enemy, the adversary, that we are truly up against. Because they call us conspiracy theorists and everything else. I don't give a rip what they call us, they call us all the names they want. That does not change a thing. It does not change what we're truly up against. But we have history as a backdrop to look back to, to know exactly how to discern the times. We can see the signs on the wall. You can tell conflict is coming, and we need to be preparing for it. But listen to this. For we are opposed around the world. Uh, this is, I want to read, this is a premium conspiracy theory statement. I'm going to quote this guy. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence on infiltration instead of invasion. Did you get that? On subversion instead of elections. On guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. That was said last week by President John F. Kennedy. Oh wait, 40 years ago we were warned. Except now what we're seeing is a manifestation of what people with discernment could see coming on the horizon 40 plus years ago. So, we are, there's no other way to put it. What we're up against right now is a demonically inspired, self-destructive insanity that's covering our nation like a blanket. We are in spiritual warfare. Right now, we need, like the sons of Issachar, if you guys read in uh, uh, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 12, it talks about the sons of Issachar, these, these uh, amazing, wise people that were able to discern the time they were in and advise Israel in the way that we should go. And we need people like that to be surrounding our leadership right now, in our communities, all the way up to the White House. Right now, there's a coup underway to displace our president. Our military is divided. Generals were are speaking of openly defying their commander-in-chief. They're being aided by a narrative, a communist propaganda narrative, that is that the, the media is complicit in. Even our local news television stations and all of these rags, which is what they've become in our in uh, across the, the inland Pacific Northwest, from the Socialist Review, the In Slander. And the Coeur d'Alene Pravda, these guys are all complicit in pushing this leftist narrative. This, they're not objective anymore. I don't even know when they were. So right now we have armed insurrectionists in Seattle that took over six city blocks. When, when uh, the second or third day into it, Governor Inslee was asked, what are you going to do about this and do you plan on using the National Guard? And he goes, I, I have no knowledge. Of, I'm not sure what you're talking about. 
the largest city in your state is under siege by people declaring independence an autonomous zone with signs saying you are, this is no longer the United States inside of this passage boundary with armed guards calling for additional armed people and you have no knowledge of it. But check this out. Just April 18th, about the time this rally started getting planned, about six weeks ago or so, Jay Inslee says Trump is fomenting domestic rebellion by calling for our states to reopen. These people are freaking insane. So let me tell you about a tale of two cities, Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We get out a third, call it Sandpoint. So two weeks ago, you have insurgents, and that's what they are, insurrectionists, take over the downtown area of Spokane, multiple city blocks cordoned off. I had people texting me, I just drove through tear gas. They've got riot police and everything else out there in Spokane. Armed patriots showed up and they were turned away by the chief of police and Kootenai County, or the, the Spokane County Sheriff saying, we don't need you, you're just going to complicate things, you're going to make things worse, just go home, let us handle this. While we're watching police officers getting overran, beaten to a bloody pulp in the streets in all these cities across the country, patriots come to their aid and they said, go away, we don't need you. But there's another cool story on the other side of the border in the heart of the American Redoubt. Now, I was there. I not only got, it was just the most beautiful thing. I not only saw it, I participated. All of us, friends, multiple people that we know, we grabbed our kits, we grabbed our weapons, and the, the police said, one of our guys, he's former uh, LAPD, um, retired, friends with some of the police officers, talked to one of the supervisors, and he said the intelligence was solid. Antifa was scouting, they had planned to come to Coeur d'Alene because they wanted to show the, the fascists that they're not safe anywhere by going into the heart. The symbol of conservative, patriot, right? And, and the police officers said the, the intelligence was solid, they absolutely were planning on coming there, and he said, we're convinced that the number one deterrent was the high number, the show of force of the armed patriots, and there were a thousand armed patriots down there on that street, yeah. downtown. Yeah. Not to mention the side streets, every corner, and so while people couldn't even go downtown because there's tear gas in Spokane, there were tourists from California, from wherever, that are sitting there whining and dining, peacefully eating and enjoying a meal on the sidewalk while six feet away are three guys armed to the hill standing there talking, and it was peaceful. Now, here's something that's really shameful, shameful. The mayor of this town that we love, my home, our backyard, this mayor joins the mayor up at Sandpoint, because we went to Sandpoint Tuesday night, Wednesday night, whatever, Thursday night when the Antifa was supposed to come, we went to Coeur d'Alene, joined with the Patriots there. Both of those mayors denounced the Patriots, calling them, uh, uh, well, uh, vigilantes, white supremacists, everything else. What a joke. I've got, I could go on for I could go for an hour, and I would not lose your attention. I have so much to say. So check this out. There's a Coeur d'Alene Pravda article. You'll be seeing orange this weekend. Within 48 hours of the Patriots standing down communist revolutionaries and maintaining peace on the streets in Coeur d'Alene. They allow these anti-gun groups to come and put orange ribbons as a, a visual demonstration against gun violence. A thousand patriots loaded to the hill, multiple firearms, not one casualty. While the police are being run out of their own places in Seattle. They're retreating. They're running with their tails between their legs in cities all across the country. It's despicable. And I can't tell you how proud I am to live in the heart of the American Redoubt. <laughs> don't even understand it. You say, with well, the first American redoubt. Sorry guys, I know, two minutes? Oh, I'm just fired up. All right. I'm just starting to actually get warm, so now I'm comfortable. Okay. So, where, uh, where was I going? Ah, oh, dang it. 
Part of the okay. readout. Okay. The when the Ameri when I started Radio Free Redoubt, weekly podcast every Sunday night, we have a radio show every Saturday morning on uh, the uh, Spokane on the ACN affiliate Liberty Broadcasting. I started that nine years ago. June fifth was our nine year anniversary. I can't believe that. That's but when we when the media first started catching on. The like, American Redoubt. They're like they're, they're the, like a little puppy dog. All, you know, their heads little cocked sideways. They're not sure what to make. But I don't like it. This Ameri it reminds me of uh, I don't know what Aryan Nation or something. Oh, we got rid of Aryan Nations and now it's back. Oh, they love acting like victims, but they're not. It sounds racist. It sounds like a whole bunch of doomsdayers uh, preparing for the end of the world. Well, that's not it either. And if it was, so what? What do you care if somebody's got five years worth of food stored up in a bunker? That doesn't harm you. But I'll tell you what, people were able to eat and drink safely out on the street, six feet away from armed citizens. And the militias accounted for a fraction of that. There were citizens, men, women, young, old that came out. They heeded the call and it was a beautiful thing. They call us anti-government. That is absolutely absurd. We absolutely love government is instituted by God. He says, judge to the judges, judge with the fear of God in your heart so that you are not corrupt because you're judging on behalf of God. So we don't have that today. We don't, we have, I mean, just, just tell, I've got, I don't have time to get into all of this stuff. No, maybe I'll make a segment out of the rest of my speech tomorrow night. So if radio freak me out. And, and the, the adversary is trying to give you, like Romans chapter 13, submit to the government. You know how, it's funny how communists, Hitler did it too. He had the pet, favorite pet scriptures to bring the Christians who might be a resistance to them under control, right? To, to use the church to do that. But church, we need to snap out of it. I want to, re I, uh, gosh, let's see. You know, I have some action items here. I have, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to leave you hanging, right there. Be respectful of these guys. These poor bands freezing. There's all this stuff to add a tune. But God bless them. Um, I'm really looking forward to listening to them. And uh, so I'm going to do the rest of this. I have some action items I want to call you guys to. RadioFreeRedoubt.com is the website. We've had a problem with our live streaming on Sunday nights. So if that happens, click on the Listen to RFR tab. and. It'll, it will be uploaded in a podcast form that you can download and share with your like-minded friends. And uh, keep up the fight. Antifa, you guys that are in Antifa, you're being used. You need to read up on the Night of the Long Knives and the Brown Shirts. You are the Brown Shirts. The Nazis are using you. Okay, they're using you to create chaos to take to the streets. And the Night of the Long Knives, the Black Shirts came out. The Gestapo, the SS. And they slaughtered the brown shirts because they were so highly organized and so chaotic, so effective, that they became a threat to the new system. There's a new system coming. They're using you as a tool. Don't be a tool. Who are?